Hello, Jody here with Inmate Sharing. Um, sometimes you just can't say everything you want to say in words like I use uh, normally on our page. So I want to do a short video today. I'm going to try to make it as short as I can anyway. I know everybody's always pressed for time. We're always so busy um, with y'all. But uh, first I wanted to share with y'all how, how my relationship with the Lord is. Uh, first, I don't cram it down people's throats. I don't do that. I try to just, you know, show it through my actions and, and hopefully p people pick up on it that way. If they don't, I definitely make it very clear that, um, that I am a Christian, which to me, believe, uh, is, has a personal relationship with the Lord, have has asked the Lord to come into my heart and save me from this evil world that we live in, um, and to believe and to confess to other people that I do believe that. I do believe that Jesus died on the cross to save us for our sins. So that's what makes me a Christian, and I, that's what I believe by uh, reading my Bible makes anyone a Christian, um, which I wanted to share with y'all my Bible studying today um, because so often we we wonder what's our plan? What's our plan list? What are we even here for? We wonder why does it take so long sometimes? Why do we have to suffer so much uh, pain? And we pray and we pray. I remember saying, you know, sometimes I've prayed till I'm purple in the face, not blue in the face, purple in the face. And um, y'all understand what I mean. Uh, I've been there. And uh, it, it just just seems like God's not listening, maybe, or but but that's not the case at all. Uh, I just want to remind y'all that of t today. Uh, I got saved 12 years ago, uh, and uh, it was back then a little cowboy church. It was only the third one in the state of Texas. Now there's hundreds. Um, we planted the third one. We helped through the planning stage. We helped through the when we built our new building. Um, my my husband and I did a lot of different ministry teams. I share that with you just so you understand kind of where I'm coming from. I wanted to finally just, I wanted to change my life from what I knew growing up, which was drugs and alcohol and abuse and mental abuse and physical abuse and sexual abuse and, you know, everything that you guys understand what I'm trying to say. And um, I wanted to change. I remember when I was 16 years old, I remember picking up a Bible for the first time, 16 years old, at my best friend's house in California, and um, where I met my son's dad, and, uh, well, I didn't meet him there. I met him in Texas, and he took me to California, but that's what how I got to California when I was younger, um, and I remember being so intrigued with it. But I didn't, I didn't, I knew it was the Bible, but I'd never read it and I didn't really understand it. But I remember it being so intriguing to me. And I remember just, I would read it every day, every day, every day. And I don't know at what age I stopped, but it wasn't long. I didn't read it for a long time. But I remember when I did read it, it might have been a couple of months um, while I was staying um, at this at my best friend's house because I, I understand y'all. I've done it. I've, I've even been homeless, you know. I. I have lived the life, so I understand. Do I understand your personal pain? Of course not. We all feel pain differently, and so I'd never claim that I understand some some certain situation with someone, but I would understand uh, say that I definitely understand as a whole pain, which we all do in a sense. I mean, I don't think anybody escapes a life with just no tragedy at all. There's no way. But just some answers that got, you know, that God reminded me of today that I wanted to share with y'all. But, but I'm sorry, back to, you know, so I, so I started, um, it was on my heart and, and my best friend there at the church at the time, uh, to start a women's ministry and we knew it was God by the way things were happening and stuff we knew it was God so um, we started a women's ministry it thrived we we did uh, you know events that had up to 500 women we did events that had two women um, we did every, we just we we were going and so if I was going to share the word of God with other women I had to know the word of God right so I really studied 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 and I, and I look back and I think, you know, my relationship with the Lord was the strongest at the time that we are in the Word. And I'll be go, oh, read your Bible. Why well, don't I have time? Or we have to make time because if we don't have a relationship with the Lord, first of all, we don't understand what's going on with, with, 
everything that's going on in here. We can't even understand it because we try to figure it out ourselves. And what I mean by relationship, I mean daily prayer and mean it. Daily Bible reading and mean it. You know, just seeking the word, talking to other people, fellowshipping, finding a Bible-based church that you can feel... Um, I just know when God, when it's God, I, I feel like I know when it's God. Uh, actually, I do. Um, in my heart, I just know um, if I don't feel good about something or um, God will show me because I've learned we can't pray for our will. We can't pray for what we want. We want our, you know, this to happen or we want our loved one to only get this amount of time being incarcerated or we want this to happen. We can't choose. We have to ask for God's will and and that's what had be done. And w once we accept that, it makes things so much easier because it makes it realize we can't do it anyway. I don't try to plan what we're going to be doing in five years or 10 years or 15 years. Of course, I have goals. I'm not saying live on the fly every day, but you have to understand goals can change. I would have never thought later in life I would have had two kids. My kids are 30, 25, 11, and 6. I, I would have never... 15 years ago, if you would have told me I was going to have another child, I would have told you you were absolutely crazy. You know, a year ago, if you would have told me I was going to be moving to the mountains from Texas where my son is, where my whole family is, I would tell you you were crazy. God has a plan. But see, everything fell right into place when those events took place. That's how I knew it was God's will, and I had to accept it for what it was. Um, but anyway, I want to share with you this morning uh, what I read. It's in James 4. Chapter 13, God has a plan for us. Look here, you people who say today or tomorrow, we're going to do such and such. A town, a town, stay there a year or open up a profitable business. How do you know what is going to happen tomorrow? For the length of your life is uncertain as the morning fog. Now you see it, soon it is gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we shall live and do this or that. Otherwise, you will be bragging about your own plans and such confidence never pleases God. So there, I mean, there it is. We can't pray for our will and God does have a plan for all of us. Every single one of us, especially when we ask the plan and you always see the results and you start going, wow, okay, God, I get it. Oh, wow. Okay, God, I see it. It happens to me all the time. And I'm so blessed for that. And um, I believe it's because during that time that I was just growing, I was, I mean, I couldn't soak in enough. I was watching every DVD, Beth Moore, Joyce Meyer. I was reading every book. I was reading my Bible. I was studying. Um, it gave me knowledge to, to know that I've got to be in a relationship with the Lord. Every time I start to slip away a little, just, you know, we all do. We're sinners. And that's the good part is Jesus forgives us. But I start to slip away a little or get a little, little discouraged or start thinking I can do something on my own or start freaking out about my son's incarceration, whatever it would be. And I have to be put in check and realize, wait a minute, this is God's will. I got to do what's God's will. That's the only way I can live and have just some peace in here. I don't want to have my guts eaten out my whole life because I could die tomorrow. I could live another 40 years. I don't want to live another 40 years in total chaos. Am I going to have tragedy? Of course. It's how I take it. Um, I, I want to share a couple more things and then, I, and then I'm going to be stopping. Um, James chapter 5, verse 7. Okay, this is why we have to wait and patience, and we suffer, suffer, suffer. God tells us we're going to suffer. And this is the power of prayer as well. This is why we pray for each other. And we tell each other that we're going to pray for each other. And when we do pray for that person, don't just say, I'll pray for you. Stop and say a prayer. The Lord hears us. Patience is suffering. Now, as for you, dear brothers who are waiting for the Lord's return, be patient like a farmer who waits until the autumn for his precious harvest to ripen. Yes, be patient and take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other's brothers. Are you yourselves about above criticism? For see, the great judge is coming. He is almost here. For examples of patience and suffering, look at the Lord's prophets. We know how happy they are now because they stay true to him. 
We have to stay true to the Lord, no one else. Then even though they suffered greatly for it, Job is an example of a man who continued to trust the Lord in sorrow. From his experience, we can see how the Lord's plan finally ended in good. Finally. They even use the word finally. That means it took a long time, a long time. It might be days, weeks, months, years. It can take a long time. But they stayed faithful and it came out great for them. That part wasn't in the Bible, but where I stopped on the part where it said um, uh, from his experiences. Uh, so we're at, we're at, uh, we're on verse. We could see how the, okay, right here. For he is full of tenderness and mercy. We are on verse 12. But most of all, dear brothers, do not swear either by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned for it. Is anyone among you suffering? He should keep on praying about it. And those who have reason to be thankful should continually be singing praises to the Lord. Is anyone sick? He should call for the elders of the church and they should pray over him and pour oil upon him, calling on the Lord to heal him. And their prayer is offered in faith will heal him for the Lord will make him well. And his sickness was caused for if his sickness was caused from sin, the Lord will forgive him. Admit your faults to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest man prays. Does that say every prayer that you pray, if you're sick, you're going to be healed? No, we have to read more into it and dig more deeper. But what that says is that the power of prayer works. And if you tell someone, I will pray for you, say a prayer for them. It doesn't have to be a formal situation. You can have a prayer with the Lord anywhere, anytime, any day. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. Wanted to share that with y'all today. Hope everybody's having a good day and God bless to all of you.